Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. It's a rainy, windy day here in the Northeast, so it's a perfect time to finish up setting our USB audio receive levels and taking a look at how that works with a couple of popular digital programs, and we'll see if we can even make a contact. Let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at setting our sound input levels. This, just like the transmit levels, is a little bit complicated, and unfortunately needlessly so, because there are just multiple places where you can set things once again. So first, as you can see, I have FL Digi set up here and running. And I'm going to just show you real quick, if we go into Configure, and sound card, I want to make sure that I have my capture and playback set to, and in my case, my 7300 is 3-USB audio codec. It'll be something USB audio codec on your system, depending on what other audio devices uh, you might have. So, and I'm going to double check this by uh, going here to my squelch and... If you remember, let me just go back into the menu. If I go to settings and connectors, I have USB audio frequency squelch set to on. So the squelch control will squelch my audio. So I'm going to turn the squelch all the way up. And you'll see that the screen went black or the waterfall went black on FL Digi. So I know I'm getting it through the audio and I'm not getting it through uh, the microphone on the on the laptop. So let's turn this back on and then once again we're gonna go into menu set connectors and now we're gonna go to the audio output level and I've actually I was fooling around with it earlier but I've actually got it at a hundred percent. I used to keep this at fifty percent and then adjust it on the computer. And I think it's better to keep it at 100% because that way you're getting the most audio you can get out of the rig. The least distortion you're going to get is if you have the highest level signal from the source. And the 7300 is not going to put out a level high enough where it's going to start distorting. So this should be the maximum usable good audio level. And we'll just double check here. I'm going to run it all the way to zero. And again, you'll see that the waterfall now on FL Digi has gone to black, so it's getting no audio. So we'll turn that back to 100%. That's where I leave it. You know, again, you can try maybe 50 or, you know, maybe you're using a different program, different computer, different setup. But I tend to leave this at 100% now. I found that seems to work pretty well. Now... We will go back over here to the computer, and once again, this is Windows 10, so if you're on a different operating system, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to right-click on my speaker and open the sound settings, and you've got to scroll down here. I want to get to the sound control panel. And we have that, and then actually I'm going to minimize this menu so that I can see this while I'm on the waterfall here. And I want to go to recording, because we're recording effectively from sub-external device. So the 7300 looks like a microphone, and then I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to click Properties. And then now we have Levels. And then here's my level here. So if I, and I've got it, you'll see, set to 60. If I turn that down to zero, again, the waterfall goes black. And if I turn it up to 100, I start to get into the little yellow stuff here. And again, this will be different if you have a different program. This is FL Digi that I'm using. It's freeware. It works pretty good. It's available on Linux and Windows and Mac. Um... So, and the, the 60% I'll talk about in a minute, but 60% seemed to be pretty good for me. And uh, on setting the receive levels, honestly, what you really need to do is set it so that your program will deco decode correctly. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to find um, 
any like gritty or uh, um, PSK or, <laughs> or other signals today. The CQ Worldwide contest is going on. And it used to be you could find PSK almost all the time. It seems like that's switched over to FT8 now. But I do have some CW here. And I have my operating mode in FLDG set to CW. Let me just clear the screen here. And well, we lost him. Let me find another place where there's a couple of CW things going on. So here's some CW, and if I click and center on that. Let's, now we see we're starting to uh, decode. And that's looking uh, actually pretty good. Not super fast right here, but... Um, so we seem to be decoding, and that's really your, your primary indicator. You're not worried about transmitting splatter. You're not worried about transmitting anything when you're setting your receive audio. The key thing is if it's decoding correctly. So if you're decoding RIDI or PSK or MFSK or any one of the other multitudes of digital modes, the key indicator is your software seems to be decoding well and you're getting you know, reasonable uh, signal-to-noise ratios and that uh, you're not getting a lot of errors. So that's the audio levels for this. Now we'll take a look at doing it in um, uh, WSJT-X. And it is a little bit different in that software, but I do think I found a setting that works for both. So we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. All right, now we're in WSJT-X. And first of all, I'm on 40 meters, so I just left the rig where it was set. With WSJT, it will automatically tune, and you'll notice I'm in FT8 mode here. So now it sets the rig properly for upper sideband data, moves the frequency. It's actually a very cool program. Um, and we're already decoding here. Now, I'm going to go through and show you the audio level changes are a little strange to me for WSJT, and I don't qu completely know why. So I'm going to go into Menu, Set, and we're going to go to Connectors again, and I'm going to go to my output level. And if I turn it all the way down to zero, um, it uh, still seems to be decoding. And I'm not quite sure why that is. And to do the same test that I did on my other checks, I will turn the squelch all the way up here. So it's squelched now. And that was just the end of the last one. But now if you watch, unfortunately, the waterfall moves a little bit slowly here. So you got to wait for 15 seconds or so. But now on this next 15-second pass, uh, you should see probably nothing so we didn't get anything so I know that this is not picking this up through the um, microphone on the laptop or through my mixer or through, or through some other place and we can just double check in the settings here and if we go to audio it's the 3 dash USB codec for my input so I know this is on the right place and I know that I'm not um, picking up anything now. So let's turn the squelch back off. And even with my... Uh, oh, I set it all the way back up. Sorry. Even with this set all the way to zero, for some reason, WSJT continues to decode. And I think that somehow in the program, it must automatically be... Um, adjusting some internal gain where it's basically turning everything all the way up inside the program and using what tiny little bit of audio must be there. Now, I will show you that it does have an effect because if you look here on the bottom part of the screen here, this is their level meter, and I do think this works a little bit um, backwards from what I'm used to because 
zero dB is actually all the way at the bottom, and then it goes up to, you know, 80 dB plus. And on most audio mixers and audio settings, zero dB is at the top end of the scale, and then you use, you know, negative dB to represent lower settings. So if I turn my audio all the way back up on the rig, you'll see that right here, my audio levels did go up. So my volume is working. Um, so I'm going to leave this at 100%. As I said, this seemed to work for both. And then let's go take a look at the audio settings on the computer. Now, I left the uh, sound menus open here, so I don't have to reopen those. Now, if I take the microphone and I set this all the way up to 100%, you'll notice in WSJT, this went red. So that's too much audio for it. And it actually won't decode well, and it starts to distort. Um, and then just the one other thing, and I can't explain this either. If I turn the audio level all the way down to zero, you will notice that on the uh, oh now it's not going to do it it was doing us on me before if I set my audio on the computer to zero I would get a bunch of spikes here like every couple hundred Hertz well you can see them a little bit starting to show up in the waterfall and again I think this has something to do with the fact that uh, actually let me turn the audio on the rig down there we go this was the spike so I have the rig audio set to zero and the computer audio set to zero and I get all these spikes and again I think this is because the WSJT software because it works with such low levels of signal it's trying to it's trying to find anything it can and it's probably going into some sort of an oscillation here so let's just go back to the normal settings that's just curiosity items and you can play with this and see what you uh, what you think but if I set this to 60 you know, it puts me kind of in a good range here. This is not red, it's green, which if you look at the manual for WSJT, it says it should be green. Um, yellow is a little bit too low, or no, yellow is too low of an audio level, and red is too high of an audio level, according to the WSJT instructions. So I found setting the rig, or excuse me, the computer audio here to 60%, and the rig audio over here to 100% seems to be um, working well for me, at least for two different programs. Now, if you're using Ham Radio Deluxe, Multi-PSK, or, you know, again, any one of the multitude of other programs out there, you may need to experiment some with them, but I think you will find generally... If you find a setting that works well for one of the programs, it's probably going to work reasonably well or be pretty close for most of the other digital mode programs. So let's close this all off. And there we go. We've got a couple of people calling CQ here. And actually, I've had my power all the way down or very low. So let me, let me set the power on the rig up here to about 35%. And just for uh, grins, we'll see if we can make an FT8 uh, contact with somebody. Let me move this window over so I can see a little better. So there's a somebody calling CQ. Let's see if we can get this guy. I have my WSJT software to automatically go into transmit mode if I double-click on a call. If you haven't played with FT8 or any of these other modes, um, the FT8 and the other WSJT modes are really cool, and it's really amazing that you can make contacts at very, very low power levels around the world. Um, yep, he called me back, so that was the red one you see there. So now I'm sending his signal strength report, and then if he... Uh, Hopefully he gets that, and then he'll say that he got it. And so it takes 15 seconds for each one of these. You can see the, the time counting here in the lower right corner if you haven't used WSJT or FT8. Now he's said 73. I'm sending my 73, and then it comes up here, and it says, Do you want to log this on the left side? 
I'm just going to let this transmission finish. Okay, and then I went out of transmit mode. So there's a WS, or, uh, yeah, an FT8 contact on WSJT, and I'm actually going to set my power to 35 because that's what I was at. And I'm going to say OK, and it actually just logged him. So there's an FT8 contact. We've set our digital inputs and outputs correctly, and everything seemed to work fine there. So there's how you do it. i got to be honest with you, FT8 is an amazing mode, and it, it's incredible to me how well it works at low powers, but I find it a little bit unsatisfying because it's a little too automated for me. You know, you double click on it and basically the software goes through and does the entire contact for you. You can't say, hey, how's the weather there? What are you using for a rig? So it's, a, you know, if, you, if you're trying to get rare stations, it's a great way to do it. But if you want to just have a little chat with somebody, it's, uh, it's not as nice to me as PSK or RIDI or... MFSK or some of the other slightly more manual modes. Anyway, there you have the receive audio settings, and uh, we've actually made a contact with it. Well, that pretty much finishes up all of the settings for both transmit and receive for USB audio. A couple of final notes on this. One, if you're going to use the accessory jack output, the analog audio output from the radio. Everything in these last two episodes still applies to that because all of the settings on the radio for the USB audio, or I should say most of the settings, for USB audio and the accessory jack audio are the same. So this will apply to that as well. And then the one other final note is once you get your settings um, figured out both the whatever you're using for the audio settings on the radio and whatever you're using on your computer you really should write them down somewhere or make a note of them in a little text file on your computer and you need to check every time you change anything at all on your computer because I've had with Windows at least if you change the devices you're using if you do an update if you do any kind of change at all it can change which the what the device name is sometimes. It can change what your audio settings is. Sometimes you may change your volume on your speaker and it was actually set to one of the audio devices and you didn't realize it. So make a note of these things so that you're not trying to fumble around and figure it out each time. You can just set it back to the same numbers. And you should double check on the rig each time you start using it when you're setting up your computer um, from a previous session, if you've turned off the computer, unplugged things, or changed anything at all, double check and make sure that you are going through the right audio devices. That's about it. If you are enjoying these, please uh, consider subscribing. You can hit the little button that pops up at the end of the video on the bottom right. I'm also happy to get likes, dislikes, comments, and questions as well. So please uh, feel free to chime in. As always, thanks for watching. This is Tom, WA2IVD, and you're watching Ham Cured Smoke.